Hi, I'm Laura. Before I dive into my story, please make sure to like and subscribe for more tales like mine. Now, let's get into it. I met Daniel at a mutual friend's birthday party. It wasn't love at first sight. It was more like fascination at first debate. We argued over the best 90s rock band, and from that heated discussion, something just clicked. We started dating, and before we knew it, a year had passed, and Daniel popped the question during a hike. It was simple. No grand gestures. Just pure love. And of course, I said yes. Meeting Daniel's family was supposed to be a milestone in our relationship, a step towards becoming family. But it felt more like stepping into a lion's den. We were invited to a family dinner at their house, and that's when I first met his sister, Emily. From the moment we were introduced, I sensed a chill from her that went beyond the usual sibling rivalry. Nice to finally meet you, Laura. Daniel has told us so much about you, Emily said her voice dripping with something that didn't quite match her words. Her eyes, sharp and assessing, seemed to look right through me. Thank you, Emily. I've been looking forward to meeting you too, I replied, trying to keep the conversation light despite the tension. Dinner was an awkward affair. Daniel's parents were polite but distant. Emily was worse. She kept bringing up stories from Daniel and her childhood, emphasizing their closeness, her words a subtle reminder of her long-standing bond with him. Every story, every memory shared, felt like a deliberate showcase of her significance in his life, overshadowing any potential place for me. Remember the time we camped out in the backyard, Daniel? We promised each other we'd always stick together, just like those stars stuck in the sky. Emily reminisced, her eyes locked on mine across the table. Yeah, those were fun times, Daniel replied, giving my hand a reassuring squeeze under the table but even his support couldn't ease the discomfort of the evening. Throughout the dinner, it became clear that the family dynamics were more complex than I had anticipated. Daniel came from a family that held traditions and family ties in high regard. This difference seemed to underline the evening, making my relationship with Daniel appear more like an intrusion into a well-guarded fortress, rather than a union to be celebrated. As the evening drew to a close, I couldn't shake the feeling of having been evaluated and found wanting. The cold reception was a harsh contrast to the warmth Daniel and I shared, and as we said our goodbyes, I couldn't help but feel that the battle lines were being drawn, not just between me and Emily, but between me and the world Daniel had grown up in. On our way home, Daniel tried to lighten the mood. Don't worry, they just need time to get used to the idea of us. It'll get better, he assured me, his voice full of hope. But as I nodded and tried to smile, a part of me couldn't help but wonder if it was just wishful thinking. As the wedding planning kicked into full gear, the underlying tension between Emily and me only intensified. Daniel and I spent evenings poring over guest lists and menu options, our living rooms scattered with fabric swatches and floral catalogs. Yet despite the joyous preparations, Emily's influence loomed like a shadow over our plans. One evening, as Daniel and I discussed wedding invitations, my phone buzzed with an email notification. It was from the venue coordinator, expressing confusion over a call from someone claiming to be handling changes for our wedding. Hey, Daniel, did you ask anyone to discuss our venue arrangements? I asked, a knot forming in my stomach. No, I haven't. Why? What's going on? His brow furrowed. It seems someone called the venue to move our date back by a month. The coordinator assumed it was a mistake and wanted to confirm with us first, I explained, feeling a mix of anger and disbelief. That has to be a misunderstanding, or... Emily, Daniel muttered, his voice trailing off as he grabbed his phone to call his sister. The phone call that ensued was terse and filled with Daniel's attempts to remain calm as he confronted Emily. I just want to understand why you would do something like that, Emily. You know how much this day means to us. Daniel's voice was strained, trying to mediate the growing rift. Daniel, someone needs to make sensible decisions. You're rushing into this without considering the family... Emily's voice was sharp, laced with a cold authority that made me shudder. As Daniel argued with Emily, I couldn't help but reflect on the small discrepancies that had been popping up. A changed appointment here, a miscommunication there. All seemingly minor, but together, they painted a picture of deliberate sabotage. In the following weeks, these incidents grew. Our chosen florist suddenly had a scheduling conflict. Our cake tasting was inexplicably cancelled and subtle but cutting remarks from Emily became more frequent during family gatherings. You know, tradition dictates that family should have a significant say in the wedding arrangements, 
You wouldn't want to break family traditions, would you? Emily would say, her words dripping with insincerity as she smiled sweetly at me across the room. Each comment, each disruption, felt like a calculated move to unsettle me, to question my place beside Daniel. And as much as Daniel tried to shield me from the brunt of it, the stress began to seep into our relationship, causing small fractures. One night, as we sat exhausted on our couch, Daniel let out a long sigh. I'm sorry, Laura. I never thought my family, that Emily would go to such lengths to disrupt our happiness. It's not just about the disruptions, Daniel. It's about us. How are we going to handle this going forward? Can we handle this? I questioned, my voice barely above a whisper, filled with a mix of frustration and fear. We will, Laura. I promise. We're in this together, right? Emily or no Emily, you are the one I chose, Daniel replied, reaching for my hand. His words, meant to comfort, did soothe some of my worries. Yet the realization remained. This was only the beginning of what we had to face. As we planned our future together, the question wasn't just about what color the napkins should be or which band would play at our reception. It was whether we could withstand the storm Emily was determined to unleash. The morning of our wedding dawned clear and bright, a perfect backdrop for what should have been the happiest day of our lives. Daniel and I were a bundle of nerves and excitement as we got ready in separate rooms, our hearts set on the new beginning that lay just hours ahead. The venue was decorated beautifully, with flowers lining the aisle and the soft melody of a string quartet floating in the air. As I stepped into my wedding dress, my mother wiped away a tear, her smile as radiant as the morning sun. You look beautiful, Laura. Daniel is a lucky man. I felt a surge of joy. Despite the troubles with Emily, today felt like a victory, like love was truly winning. The ceremony was set to start. In strode Emily, dressed in a white gown that mirrored mine, her face set in a determined, almost triumphant expression. The murmurs started instantly, spreading through our guests like wildfire. I am sorry to interrupt, but there is something I must say, Emily announced loudly, her voice cutting through the soft music like a knife. The room fell into a stunned silence. This is wrong. Daniel belongs with someone who understands him, who has been part of his life through everything. That person is me. Gasps and whispers filled the room as Emily continued, her eyes locked on mine, challenging, accusing. Daniel, tell them. Tell them how we planned our future together. How this... This is a mistake. Daniel stood frozen at the altar, his eyes flicking between me and Emily, the conflict evident on his face. After a moment that felt like an eternity... He took a deep breath and spoke. Emily, you are my sister, and I love you. But what you're doing is wrong. Laura is my future, my choice. I am marrying her. His voice was firm, his decision clear. But Emily wouldn't have it. No, you're just confused. Blinded by... by whatever this is. Emily's voice cracked, her facade beginning to crumble as tears started to stream down her face. I am not confused, Emily. I am very clear. Please, leave now. The tension was palpable as everyone waited for Emily's next move. With a sob, she turned and fled the room, her departure leaving a trail of shock and discomfort. The ceremony resumed, but the joyous atmosphere had dimmed. Daniel and I exchanged our vows in a haze of mixed emotions, the echoes of Emily's outburst lingering in the air. After the ceremony, as guests shuffled to the reception, Daniel pulled me aside. I am so sorry, Laura. I had no idea she would go to such lengths. It's not your fault, Daniel. But it's clear now more than ever. We need to stand together, more united than ever. Yes, united, Daniel agreed, a determined look crossing his face. Today is about us, our love, and no one will take that away from us. The reception began, and despite the earlier chaos, we tried to salvage the celebration. Laughter slowly returned, and music filled the gaps left by earlier tensions. The reception carried on, the mood undeniably subdued as guests whispered amongst themselves, reeling from Emily's earlier spectacle. Daniel and I tried to mingle, to smile and thank everyone for being there, but the air was thick with unspoken words and pitying glances. Later, as we sat at our table, Daniel's mother approached, her expression a mixture of embarrassment and resolve. She reached out, her touch hesitant, I am so sorry, Laura. What Emily did today? 
there are no words. She doesn't speak for all of us. Thank you. It means a lot to hear you say that, I replied, trying to muster a grateful smile despite the swirling emotions inside. We just want what's best for Daniel. And if that's with you, then we support it, she added, before returning to her seat, leaving a small comfort in her wake. Throughout the evening, the reality of what had transpired began to truly sink in. The wedding that was supposed to celebrate love and union had morphed into a battleground of family loyalties and personal vendettas. I excused myself to the edge of the venue, needing a moment alone. The cool night air was a balm to my frayed nerves. Daniel found me there, his presence a reassuring constant in the chaos of the day. We'll get through this, Laura. Together, he said, wrapping an arm around me as we looked out at the quiet darkness. I know, Daniel, but it's hard not to feel like this day has been taken from us. I wanted it to be perfect. It's not the day that makes us. It's every day after this, he replied, his voice steady and sure. The next morning, news of Emily's actions had spread within the family, and the backlash was swift. Daniel's father called us to apologize on behalf of the family, his words heavy with disappointment. We've spoken to Emily. She's taking some time away to think about her actions. We hope this can be a start to mending things, his father said, the hope in his voice tinged with uncertainty. Daniel responded with a firmness I had grown to admire. I appreciate that, Dad. But for now, Laura and I need space to start our lives without this hanging over us. As days turned into weeks, the emotional toll of the wedding began to lessen. The initial hurt gave way to a strengthened resolve to build a life with Daniel, one not overshadowed by familial expectations or sabotage. Our discussions about Emily and the wedding became less frequent, replaced by plans for our future, discussions about where we would live and how we would navigate our new life together. Despite the rocky start, our resolve to make our marriage work only grew stronger. The love and support from our friends and the members of Daniel's family who reached out to us in the aftermath brought a newfound appreciation for the relationships that truly mattered. Our getaway was exactly what Daniel and I needed. As we sat by the lakeside, watching the sunset paint the sky in hues of orange and pink, the tranquility seemed to mend the frayed edges of our recent memories. We made it, didn't we? We did. It feels like we can finally breathe, I responded, feeling the truth of my words. I'm proud of how we handled everything, of us. This is just the beginning, Laura. There's so much more for us ahead. As days turned into weeks, our life settled into a new rhythm, one marked by quiet evenings at home and weekend explorations of little-known local spots. Our conversations often drifted to plans for the future, perhaps a new home or starting a family. Each discussion was a stitch in the fabric of our life together, weaving strength into our bond. One evening, as we arranged our new apartment, Daniel paused, holding a photo frame we had received as a wedding gift. It was a picture of us on our wedding day, just moments before Emily's interruption. Should we put this up? He asked, uncertainty in his voice. I took the frame looking at our smiling faces, a snapshot of joy amidst the chaos. Yes, it reminds us of everything we've overcome. It's part of our story. As Daniel nodded, placing the frame on the mantel, the doorbell rang. It was a delivery, a housewarming gift from Daniel's parents. Inside the box was a note. For new beginnings, with all our love and support. The gesture was a balm, smoothing the last rough edges of doubt about some family member's feelings. It seemed we were finally turning a page, not just in our personal lives, but in our relationships with Daniel's family as well. Months passed, and with each day, the remnants of past conflicts became more distant. Emily remained out of touch, her absence a silent acknowledgement of her need to reflect on her actions. Meanwhile, other family members reached out with tentative olive branches, which we accepted, knowing the value of family, a family that respected our boundaries and our union. Looking forward, I often found myself envisioning a future filled with love and laughter, perhaps with little ones of our own. I imagined telling them our story, not just about the challenges, but about how we grew stronger through them. One night, as Daniel and I sat watching an old movie, he turned to me during a quiet scene. What are you thinking about? He asked, his eyes curious. About the future? About all the stories we'll tell our kids? About how their mom and dad fought for their happiness and won? I replied, my heart full. And they'll know that they can overcome anything, 
as long as they have love and each other, Daniel added, pulling me closer. As we sat there, intertwined in the soft glow of the TV light, I felt a profound sense of peace. The past, with all its shadows, had indeed been challenging, but it had led us here, to this moment of simple joy. The journey hadn't been easy, but it was ours, and it was just the beginning. Now that our story has reached its conclusion, I'd love to hear your thoughts. In moments of conflict, do you think it's more important to stand by your family no matter what, or to support your partner and the life you've chosen together? Share your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want to see more, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us bring more stories like this to you.